four of the 111 people who came here under the Medivac legislation went to hospital. Um, that would seem to me that it wasn't the life and death situation that was being pushed by those who were trying to get this bill up, thinking that it was uh, you know, the final blow that they were going to put into uh, the Liberal government before the Quiet Australians had their say um, just a few weeks ago. Corey, you were in the Parliament. You, uh, you, you know the fervour that was around the building and particularly the push on the crossbench there, um, where uh, you know our mate Darren Hinch was in and out and back again, but of course was always going to back this thing in. It's now down to Jackie Lambie. Um, I'm not going to ask you what you think she's going to do, but what do you think about the head of uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the government official that came out and confirmed, of all these life and death cases, four went to hospital? Um, it's not surprising because we knew that this was a way of gaming the system. We pointed that out to the crossbench and the Labor Party and all we got in response was abuse and hectoring and pious lectures. Um, we also know that a lot of these people were offered uh, treatment in... Taiwan and they refuse that. This is a scam and it's an indictment upon the doctors that have been involved in it. I bet you that most of them are the, the involved with the green left, uh, people like Dr Di Natale. And uh, I just think Australia's got to protect its sovereignty and its borders and I hope Jackie Lambie, and I think she will, I think she's been very, very sensible in this parliament, I hope Jackie Lambie uh, continues to go in a bat for common sense because it's absolutely critical that we secure Australia's borders. Yeah, I mean, Mark, what does it say to you that four of the 111 went to hospital? Well, it makes me ask the question, where did the other 107 go? Um, the beach, uh, casino, Luna Park, where, where, where's the other 107? If they, if they came here for medical reasons and didn't go to a hospital, where did they end up? Well, this is the thing. Plenty of the people are going to argue the that, they went, that they went into the mental health system. But, oh, well. but if it was a matter of life and death, that meant you came out of the places like Manus and Nauru that have a whole phalanx of, of, of doctors and mental health services, it says a lot to me about the, how this wasn't about life and death. Aren't a lot of mental health clinics in hospitals? What, what sort of... That's what I'm saying. Clinics have they... Uh, My knowledge of the mental health... But, I mean, health any, any high-profile person yeah. who doesn't plead mental illness is an idiot because the medical science can never prove whether or not you're mentally ill. Correct. Okay? They just don't know enough about the human brain. So it's a catch-all excuse... For doing anything. So the fact that you're pleading mental illness, well, that could mean anything under the sun. And uh, if they've come here and haven't ended up in a hospital, well, it just shows they weren't really sick. Well, and let's talk about that that, that bar that actually got people in. So you're saying the other 107 are in some well, the, clinic out there uh, on, a ca on a couch? That's the immediate pushback that comes from those Saying life, life's on. terrible and my whole thing's collapsing. All brought on by the stress of being... Well, why don't we send around to uh, Karen Phelps's place to sort them out? You know, that'd be the easy answer, wouldn't Fair it? Fair point. Well, she Isn't she a doctor? Here on, on she TV charges $400 for, for initial consultation. That, that, I don't know if we can afford that. that. That'll really sort them out. Yeah, well, OK. Why don't we send them... <laughs> Why don't we send them to a tropical island paradise for a holiday? Maybe, <laughs> like, in the route. It should be noted here that the Senate committee was told by, uh, by Pozzullo, who's the head of Home Affairs, none of those transferred remained in hospital and two-thirds were not even outpatients. So of the four who made it, two-thirds of the four do your number. So they were at the casino? Well, they weren't life-or-death situations. And, Troy, this is the point. This is what Labor signed up to and this is what Labor will defend in the Parliament with your mate KK, who will keep failing up until she's Labor leader, Prime Minister, <laughs> Governor-General and then eventually the Queen. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, as, as your viewers would know, I was not a supporter of the Medivac laws because I did, rep I did think that they represent a fundamental change to the, bi to the largely bipartisan border protection regime that we've had now for some years. I mean, excepting that it took Labor quite a while to get there and, of course, they dismantled the border protection regime um, in 2007 and 2008. There's no doubt about that. Um, but this did represent a fundamental challenge to the system. And I'd like... You know, there's a committee going on now, and this bill is going to come back up uh, to the parliament, or this law, or, or, or rather a bill to, to amend the law, uh, is going to come on in the next parliament. So I would actually like the advocates of it to answer some of these questions. Because um, what's happened in this hearing today is we've found out that, um, you know, this is not um, do or die hospital medical treatment, that this is what was being argued for. There's 111 people, as you keep pointing out, and only four of them um, have gone to a hospital and not all of them have remained um, in hospital. Now, there are, there are medical facilities um, in these offshore detention centres 
um, and in the surrounding communities where they can access needed medical help. But we were constantly told that they needed hospital care that could only be available here in Australia. Well, well, they haven't even accessed it here in Australia. They haven't needed it and they haven't been referred to it or admitted to a hospital. So there are serious questions to answer here before we even begin uh, to consider um, repealing this law and re replacing it with something else. And so this is actually, I think, quite damaging um, for the for the crossbenchers, some of them who aren't there anymore, uh, who advocated this bill, and for the Labor Party, including Anthony Albanese, who was working behind the scenes to twist Bill Shorten's arm to support this legislation. Well, but it is this thing, Rita, where, I mean... You, you can see the pushback, right? You can imagine the, the conversation while they're planning Radio National Breakfast tomorrow, going, oh, <laughs> did you see what those people were talking about last night? Oh, they don't even understand. Quick, uh, let, let's push back. Let's get four refugee advocates, we'll get the President of the AMA and Karen Phelps on, to flood the zone with information so everyone forgets four of 111 went to hospital. Yes, and Troy mentioned that uh, there is already fairly substantial medical uh, help available in Nauru. And if I could read from a go government uh, document from 2018, in 30th of November 2018, there were 61 health professionals, including 29 mental health professionals, in Nauru providing services for refugees and asylum seekers. That is an approximate ratio of one health professional to every eight refugees or asylum seekers. So can you find any town in Australia that's got a one to eight ratio of health professionals? That is just extraordinary. And that doesn't even include the health services that you can get through the Nauru system, through their hospital system. So let's not pretend that they're on this, uh, you know, in the tropics with no medical facilities, no medical help. We have paid a great sums of money to have people there to treat them um, for both mental health issues and other health issues. And yet we've got these activist doctors who think that's not enough. They have to come here so they can access the legal system and then that takes years and years to resolve. And that is really the, the whole point of this uh, Medivac bill, to... to find a backdoor way of entering the country. No, that was it. It was a crowbar to get in, but of course nobody, nobody's allowed to say we got it wrong, because that of course, well, we all know they're never going to admit that. Certainly the, uh, the failure in chief on our way up the greasy pole, uh, taking potshots at us along the way. I think